In today's video, we're gonna build these 10 KPIs. KPIs are useful for giving your users an at-a-glance view of performance. Some of these will be able to be calculated on a single sheet and others will have to be put together next to each other on a dashboard. I'll cover all of that today. The data set we're gonna use is about car sales. There's a link to this data set in the description. While I'm building these KPIs, we're gonna focus primarily on current year versus prior year. If you wanna look at month over month, where I have year, swap out the calculation for month. Let's create a new calculated field. Let's call this one current year. My calculation is mustachio max date shrunk of the year of the purchase date. And close off the mustachio. All this is doing is returning the date for the maximum year in the data set. If I want this to be at the monthly level, again, to calculate our month over month, all I would do is swap out where it says year with month. You'll be able to repeat that in every one of these calculations that I create. So this is gonna return a date. Now, I wanna check if my dates in my data set match that current year. So I'm gonna create a new calculated field and I'm gonna call this one is current year. My calculation here is current year is equal to the date trunk at the year level of purchase date. This is gonna look at every single row and see if the date matches my current year. Click on okay. Now we need to compute our prior year. I'm gonna highlight both current year and is current year and duplicate those. On the current year copy, let's edit. Rename it PY. My formula is gonna be slightly different this time. I need to wrap my level of detail expression inside of a date add function in order to subtract one year. To do that, I'm gonna choose date add, and then the date part I'm gonna do is year. And again, if you're gonna do it at the monthly level, you would just change this to month. The interval is minus one to go backwards one date, and then a comma, and then I'm gonna move my last bracket after the right mustachio. This is gonna take my maximum year and subtract one year. To do this by month, I would take my maximum month and subtract one month. Click on okay. Right click on is current year copy and choose edit. Rename it is PY. Swap out CY for PY and that's all there is to it. I'm comparing every date in the data set to my prior year. Click on okay. Now we wanna calculate our sales for the current year. Create a new calculated field and I'm gonna call it current year sales. In here, I'm gonna convert my is current year into an integer. What that means is the is current year field is returning a true or a false. We're either in the current year or we're not. When we are in the current year, it returns true. Turning my Boolean into an integer changes the true to a one. And I'm gonna multiply that by sales. Click on okay. Duplicate that calculation, edit the copy, and let's call this one prior year sales. All I need to do is replace is current year with is prior year. Click on okay. And now I get a single number for current year sales and a single number for prior year sales. Now we wanna calculate the difference between the two. Create another calculated field. I'm gonna call this y over y difference. My calculation is the sum of the current year sales minus the sum of the prior year sales. Click on okay. If I drag that onto the text shelf as well, we now see that we have a difference of about five million. But we also wanna get the percent change. Create one more calculated field. I'm gonna call this one year over year percent difference. And in this case, I'm gonna take my year over year difference calculation and divide that by the sum of the prior year sales. Now make sure that you have a sum on your denominator, otherwise you're gonna get the error message that says we cannot compare aggregate and non-aggregate. Click on okay. Right click on that field, choose default properties, number format, choose custom, and then enter plus 0.0% semicolon minus 0.0%. Click on OK. Drag that onto the text shelf. Now we have our percent change. Great, let's start building our KPIs. Drag current year sales to the text shelf. Drag year over year percent difference to the text shelf. Click on the text shelf and hit the three dots. I'm gonna move my sales current year to the first line, center everything, and my sales current year, I'm gonna make that a nice big number. My year over year difference, I'm gonna make that a slightly smaller number. After that, I'm gonna type in versus prior year. Now I wanna make sure that my users know this is sales. So above current year sales, I'm gonna type in the word sales, and let's make that a smaller font. Click on okay. In alignment, choose center horizontal and center vertical. And now we have our first KPI. In this second KPI, I'm gonna create a spark line as well as summary numbers in my title. To do that, 
I need to create a new calculated field and I'm gonna call this current year sales total. I wanna take my current year sales and wrap that in a sum and a level of detail expression. So just mustachios. Click on okay. Right click, create another calculated field and let's call this one prior year sales total. And the same thing, mustachio, sum, prior year sales, and then a closed mustachio. Click on okay. Let's duplicate our year over year difference field, edit the copy, and I'm gonna call this one year over year difference total. In my year over year percent difference total, my calculation is brackets, current year sales total minus my prior year sales total, bracket, divided by my prior year sales total. Click on okay. Drag current year sales total to the detail shelf and year over year difference total to the detail shelf. Click on the title, remove the contents, type in the word sales so we know which metric we're looking at, and insert my current year sales total. In the new line, insert our year over year difference. Type in versus prior year. And now it's a bit of formatting. My sales, I'm gonna make 10 point. Our current year sales total, I'm gonna make 22 in bold. And then my percent difference, I'm gonna make that 10. Highlight everything and center. Click on OK. Now we want to create that sparkline look. Right click and drag purchase date to the columns and pick discrete months. Click on OK. Drag current year sales to the rows. And now we have a nice little line chart. Right click on the axis at the bottom and choose format. Let's format our months to be the first letter. Right click on the axis on the left and edit axis. Uncheck include zero. Right click on the axis and uncheck show header. On the label shelf, choose show mark labels and you've got a couple of options here. We can choose the line ends, which labels January and December, or we could choose the min and the max. I'm gonna go with that. Right click on the header where it says purchase date and hide the field labels for columns. If you enjoy what you're seeing, remember to like this video. That'll help other people find it too. And don't forget to click on subscribe. I'd hate you to miss any videos that I create. Let's duplicate sheet two. This time, we wanna also include a comparison to prior year sales. To do that, I need to right click on current year sales and choose show header. Drag prior year sales on top of the axis to get a combined axis view. Now we have two lines, one for the current year sales and one for the prior year sales. Right click on the axis and choose edit axis, uncheck include zero. We can adjust our colors if we want. I'm gonna leave them like this for now. Right click on the axis and uncheck show header. Notice now my labels are on the min and the max of the entire data set. So in this case, I'm gonna get rid of my min and my max. So I'm just gonna uncheck show mark labels. Now I want my user to know that the blue line represents the current year sales. So to do that, I'm gonna go into my title and in my current year sales, I'm just gonna make that blue. Click on okay. Let's duplicate sheet two again. This time we wanna have an area chart for the prior year and a line chart for the current year. Drag prior year sales onto the row shelf, right click on prior year sales and choose dual axis. Right click on the axis on the right and choose synchronize. Right click on the axis on the right again and change the mark type to an area. We want the area chart to be in the back. So right click on it and choose move marks to back. And now it's a bit of formatting. I'm gonna to go to my all marks card and remove measure names. On my prior year sales marks card, I'm gonna change the color to maybe a light gray. Go back to the all marks card, choose label and uncheck show marks. Now right click on the header on the right hand side and uncheck show header. But notice we still have this border around the outside. So right click in the view and choose format. Go to the borders option, turn your row divider off and turn your column divider off. And again, go into your title and set the current year sales to blue. Click on okay. Duplicate again. This time we're gonna look at bar charts. So right click on current year sales and choose show header. Right click on the axis and choose edit axis and make sure you check the include zero option because we always want bar charts to start at zero. Change the mark type to a bar, click on label and turn off the mark labels. Now we just want to see the trend. In this case, I'm going to leave the axis on here, but I want to get rid of the title. So right click on the axis and choose edit axis and get rid of the current year sales title. This is now our fourth KPI card. Let's duplicate that sheet and we want to show a comparison to prior year sales. To do that, I'm gonna drag prior year sales on top of the axis to create a combined axis view. Right click on that axis, choose edit axis, and get rid of the value title. Drag measure names to color. This is gonna stack them on top of each other. On the menu, choose analysis, stack marks, and turn them off. We wanna have one inside of the other. Drag measure names 
to the size shelf. And we can see that our current year sales is inside of our prior year sales, which is what we're looking for. Double click on the measure name shelf. Let's choose prior year sales, choose the color palette of your choice. I'm gonna pick Seattle grays and make it a light gray. And now I can see how my current year sales compare to my prior year sales. Now I've been double clicking my title and changing my current year sales to blue, but I also could just change the title to call this current year sales. And then I probably don't need to make that blue. And there we go. We have our fifth KPI chart. Duplicate that sheet. Remove measure names from the size shelf. Drag prior year sales onto the detail shelf. Go to the analytics pane. Drag a reference line onto each cell. We want this reference line to be our prior year sales. In the formatting, change the line to dark and increase the opacity to 100%. Uncheck the show recalculate option. And now we're looking at current year sales versus prior year sales. What might be useful in this view is to color code the blue bars by whether you're above or below the prior year. To do that, let's create a new calculated field. I'm gonna call this one year over year increase. Now we already have a calculation for year over year difference. So I'm gonna drag that into the calculation and just say, is it greater than zero? Click on okay. Drag that year over year increase to the color shelf. And now I get two colors, one for below prior year and one for above prior year. Let's edit our colors. Let's make the false red for negative, and let's make the true blue. Click on okay. And now we can see which months are above or below the prior year. Right click on the axis, choose edit axis, and remove the title. Now here's a really fun one that I like. Let's create a new sheet. Drag current year sales total to detail and year over year difference total to the detail. Let's go back to the last sheet we created, double click on the title, select everything and copy. Go to our new sheet, edit the title, paste, center, and there we go. We have our big numbers in there again. What I wanna do this time is just look at our current year sales as a bar chart. Drag current year sales to the columns and we get a nice little bar. Drag prior year sales total to the detail shelf. Go to the analytics pane, drag on a reference line for the cell and change our value to the prior year sales total. In the line formatting, increase the opacity to 100%. Click on OK. Go back to our data pane, and we can drag our year over year increase field to the color shelf, and now we can see that year over year were above the prior year. Let's do a bit of formatting. Go to the top edge of the axis and drag it down to make our bar a bit fatter. Right click on the axis and uncheck show header. And there we have it, a simple bar chart with an indicator for the prior year. Let's keep going. This time we're gonna build two sheets and combine them onto the dashboard. Let's start by going back to sheet one and choose duplicate. Go back to sheet six, right click and choose duplicate. Now in this example, we don't wanna show the title. So let's hide the title. That's all we need to change here. Drag year over year increase off of the color shelf. We wanna create a little indicator that shows us the months that are down versus the prior year. Let's create a new calculated field. And I'm gonna call this one year over year decrease indicator. My function is if my year over year increase is equal to false, meaning it's a decrease, then I wanna just put in a little dot. Else, quote, quote, end. Click on okay. Drag that new field to the column shelf. And notice we get a little dot when we're below prior year. Right click on one of those dots and choose format. In the font, make it red, and let's make it nice and big. A little bit of cleanup. Right click in the view and choose format. In the borders option, set our row dividers to none and our column dividers to none. And now we have another way to show the months that are decreased versus prior year. Now to see what these are gonna look like side by side on the dashboard, I'm gonna create a new dashboard and I'm just gonna shrink it up. Let's say I wanna make it 400 wide by 300 high. I'm gonna drag in the sheet with the big numbers and then drag in the sheet with the bar chart and the little indicators to the right of it. Hide the title on that sheet, choose the first sheet and change the fit to entire view. Right click on the title and choose hide title. Now we need to make the dashboard a bit wider to make sure everything fits. So let's make it maybe 600 wide and now we can resize our big numbers. And there we go. We have a nice little side-by-side -side KPI card. And there we go. We've got nine options for displaying KPIs. I'll put these all in one dashboard so it looks nice and neat for when you download it. If you have any questions, please leave a comment. There's of course, tons and tons of ways to display KPIs. These are just my favorite ways to do it. I find them very easy to build and they communicate exceptionally well. Over the last week, I've given you a KPI quick start guide, a video and workbook to create 14 impactful KPIs, 
and 30 KPI dashboard templates. You know what? I'm actually just getting started. Your next bonus is two more free workbooks. One is a template for comparing KPIs across multiple time periods. The other is a workbook with all of the calculations you need to create simple KPI cards. And if you design KPIs, then these bonuses are all about helping you make them better. This is the deal. I've created hundreds of KPIs over the years. I've created them for consumer goods, social networks, finance, human resources. You name the industry, I've probably done it. I know what works and what doesn't. And I know how to explain them in a super simple fashion. And it works. If you have any worries about this KPI stuff, or if you have tons of experience and want to brush up, then my workshop is exactly what you need. I'll show you how to do it. So if this feels like an amazing offer, it is. And if it feels like I'm working hard to enroll you, I am. I'm trying to enroll you in developing your career. I'm trying to enroll you in a more satisfying job, one you look forward to going to every day. I'm trying to enroll you in continuing to improve your skills so that you can make the impact you were meant to make. You're probably wondering how much this workshop costs. The reality is they're an investment in yourself and your future. The cost to reserve your spot is only 57 pounds. I bet you thought it would be a lot more, right? You'll get a copy of the workshop recording and any materials we create. If you can't make it live, don't worry. As long as you enroll in time, you'll get everything after the workshop. I'm putting together my absolute best offer to take every obstacle out of the way and to bring you into the best Tableau training experience you can get. So go ahead and click the button below this video and join me for my KPIs workshop on Tuesday, February 20th at 4 p.m. UK time, 11 a.m. Eastern time. There's one thing I forgot to mention. This is a limited time offer. The class is next week. Registration closes Tuesday at 2 p.m. UK time, 9 a.m. Eastern time. After that, I'll close registration and start the class. I'll send you everything you need before the class. I don't know when you'll be watching this, but you need to act quickly because this is a limited time offer. The registration window is closing soon. Click the link below and I'll see you there.